Good morning, students. In this present class, uh, I would like to look at or outline the like energy transitions in India. Okay, and also the energy questions. What are the questions which we ask with uh, with reference to the energy and development in India? I'll be more focusing on these slides. Okay, so in the previous lecture, I would like to retouch on the very idea of uh, uh, what we have seen in the previous lecture. Okay. Uh, I tried to introduce in the previous class. I tried to introduce the two version of uh, development. One is the state. The other one is the civil society point of view on development. How the development is supposed to be but how the development is actually happening. And with reference to development, okay, we also try to understand what is the connections between the development, science, and energy. Okay, what are the purpose of, what are the purpose of um, understanding these two different actors' point of view? One is that you will be able to get to know as I've said clearly, it's an heterogeneity actors. Heterogeneity of actors point of view. Point of views on energy, science and development. By understanding the heterogeneity of actors' point of view on energy science and development, we are also trying to understand the nature of contradictions and conflict. Okay. The second is that I also raise the question of. Uh, did the government follow the optimality in allocation of resources? So it's the second question is the very idea is that uh, trying to understand the principles of optimality in allocation of resources. Okay. The central, very very the centrality of this addressing these or answering or understanding these two point of views or these two points or these two interventions which lead us to understand uh, multiple dimensions or, multi or, or it, it makes us to explore uh, different set of an aspects on uh, the political level. The first the idea is that okay the first idea is that you will be able to you will be able to better understand uh, for instance uh, of authority of Allocation of resources. Allocation of resources and decision making. Uh, authorities involvement in allocation of resources and the decision making. Now the second point of view is that uh, what is the very idea of the utility maximization? So the very uh, notion of uh, the utility maximization is that we have uh, resources, what are the resources we have? We should use those resources with the full efficiency, what are the resources we have? So that's, that's which we translate into an uh, uh, utility maximization. Okay, at the same time, we are also trying to understand uh, the third aspect of it is that uh, the public as being part of the political process of development. Okay, so these are some of the three uh, major points we would like to uh, explore from understanding these two point of views. At the same time, the fourth point will be the very crucial point. That is the very crucial point is that the non-intervention of state
state in the economic activities. So this is very uh, crucial from the uh, the classical economy onwards. Okay, from the classical economic point of view, or even for, for uh, from the neoclassical uh, economics point of view, that non-intervention of the state in the economic activities uh, uh, are preferred. But however, if you look at in 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 the context of in the sector of in energy in India, that the state or the government they had they have been like controlling the energy sector. Okay, that means like uh, not giving any uh, certain room to the private sector's participation until 1991. So the state control limited the private participation. participation in energy production and distribution and this was the case uh, until uh, 1991 okay uh, so that means like here the very uh, notion of the economy or the very fundamentals of the uh, economics is that uh, it gives more uh, preference to the state as a kind of a facilitator state as a facilitator But this, the norm of the state as a facilitator uh, in the market development is uh, completely like uh, you will be able to see that uh, the state has moved away from facilitating it. Rather, the state wants to keep uh, keep these sector in hand because it's the revenue generation. Revenue generations, which the revenue which which we generated through different set of sources, different set of sources of energy okay. and also oh, for instance in the case of an, uh, uh, nuclear technologies uh, there is a kind of an uh, uh, there are there are certain certain there are, there are certain a uh, kind of an, the political as well as the scientific points are there which uh, the state would like to maintain a kind of a, uh, secrecy that stops uh, taking the nuclear technology or privatizing the nuclear technology okay so this this all some of the points which we would like to explore uh, in the process of uh, uh, in the process of understanding the relations between the uh, development science and energy okay uh, in this specific class okay i would like to more focus on uh, I will be more uh, focusing on the factors which influencing the uh, transition. Okay, the factors which influence the transition. Okay, so the transition of energy sector. Okay. Uh, so that, that we are moving from, uh, uh, for instance, the coal-based uh, to a kind of an or uh, conventional to a non-conventional source of energy. What factors influence this particular transition? We will be like able to understand this transition from uh, three different experts' point of view. Okay, the first is about it's the scientific. Communities point of view. Okay, the other one is the economist point of view. The third one is that sociologist understanding of this transition. Okay, today I'll be able to, today I'll be able to more give a kind of an overall outline, and then slowly in the next class I'll be like moving more, much more deeper. Okay, so what is the what is the factor of understanding? What why we are supposed to? What is making us to understand this? The factors influencing the transition is that when you understand this, uh, you will also try to understand two different contexts. Okay, two different contexts. The first context is that uh, 1973. The second is that 2008. So you will be able to see a lot of a kind of an uh, the policy policies new policies. With reference to 
energy as well as technology have been taken in these two different phases. Okay, we will be able to understand this the logic of uh, these new policy initiatives. Okay, uh, the first is that uh, first is about the, the scientific community's understanding of the energy. Basically, they try to enter the scientific community enters with the very idea or very understanding of uh, the consequences of industrial production. What is witnessing out of the industrial production or the industrial revolution is started in the last 200 years? Okay. The, the first, the main thing, the understanding is that the primarily they will be like trying to tell that the industrial productions and trying to correlate with the climate change. Okay, this climate change, they, they try to infer this climate change at different levels. One is a clear outcome of the monsoon failure. The second is that rise in sea level. The third is that the rise in temperature, increase in temperature. And the fourth one will be the depletion of ozone layer. Okay. This then subsequently the climate change. Uh, which also complied by the environmental degradation. The environmental degradations, the environmental degradations in terms of one is a lot of deforestation, which is happening. At the same time, there is a rise in pollution and contamination of pollution and contamination together in terms of water, soil, okay, uh, first is water, soil and air. And followed by this, you will also witness a lot of kind of health issues, new health issues are coming up, especially, especially New diseases. For instance, most of the most of these diseases are with reference to respiratory nature. Respiratory diseases. Even for instance, the COVID-19 could be an example. SARS, MERS, these all are part of it. So when the scientific community understands it, the scientific community understands it in a kind of an ecosystem perspective. Ecosystems perspective. What is this ecosystems perspective? Is that the ecosystem is it's, it's a combination of ecology with environment. Environment is a kind of a setup. It's a social. It's a, a physical social setup. Okay, in which. The interactions and the interrelationship between biotic and abiotic happens. Biotics are living things, uh, abiotics are non living things. For instance, climate, soil, atmosphere, water, this all are. There is a kind of an equal interactions. So the, the scientists, the scientific community understands the how this ecosystem changes over a period of a time. How the ecosystem changes over a period of time. By understanding this, they make a question. Okay. What is this question is that? Very central question. Very the central question is that what is nature's nature? 
Number second is that how the nature's nature change with the cultural interaction with the interaction of culture and the third question is that how to stop what is that how to mitigate one is about the mitigation strategies and the second question will be on on how to mitigate and how to adapt to the new socio climatic conditions so how the entire the human population can mitigate the consequences the negative consequences of the change at the same time the question is that how to adapt oneself to that particular change so this is this is purely a for, for instance this is kind of a, the scientific representation it's purely a, a scientific representation of what is what happens with with the ecological structure so this is this is the primarily it's a representations it's a kind of a representations from the scientific community uh, which which influence the other set of an actors other set of an experts one is it's an economist at the same time it is the sociologist okay uh, remember that uh normally the way the sociologists enter into the picture is here is that uh they will be like able to understand that what is happening to one's own life okay what kind of a changes what kind of a behavioral changes what kind of an attitudinal changes which happens within the individual so they try to understand that attitude and behavioral changes and they engage with the science okay at, at the same time they also engage with the economics okay engage with the economics in the sense the economic development as well as the economic growth what is happening so normally it's it's on the one side it is it is about the science which enters on the other side it is it is the sociologist which enters into the paradigm of understanding the economics okay before trying to like explore the explore the, explore all the factors or all the understanding of uh, sociological understanding on this transition let's understand what is economists take on this and their uh, the change uh, within the nature okay so now the next is the next part is that i would like to clarify on uh, the economic economist understanding on this situations economist understanding or what is happening within the uh, ecological structures how do they understand it for them they they just look at two factors two factors the primary concern one is it's about the economic development increase in the economic development or increase in the growth level on the other hand they also concerned about the increase in the human population when they concern about there is an increase in the human population at the same time there is an we need to maintain the economic development okay we are also concerned about the requirement of the energy needs is for the three purposes basically one is for industry second is for the transport fourth is 
for thousand weeks. So we try to look at what sort of a, the resources which could feed this energy needs is that what is it's an electricity, it's an oil which we produce it through coal, hydro, or for instance oils in the sense petrol, kerosene, diesel, and even for instance gasoline, new biofuels and everything. So primarily they look at the factor of the present and the future energy demand. So when they look at the future energy demand, they, they also try to understand what is the supply. How much supply do we have? Okay. So here the problem comes. Okay. So they try to bring the understanding of the uh, unsustainable production process. Okay. At the same time, uh, uh, unsustainable energy resources. So they, they try to look at the notion of unsustainability. Unsustainability. At the same time, they also try to bring the notion of uh, the ecological disturbance. So it makes them to question. Okay. Uh, primarily, it's, it's the question which comes to the mind is that uh, more the economy. more the economic activities or more the economic productions, economic cycles, more the disasters. So this is, this is the primary equation, primary understanding. They try to derive, but at the same time they also answer, it. answer this question is that should we need to, should we need to reduce the industrial production natural production as well as for instance reduce the growth rate for this particular question they take a kind of a no the answer would be no to this question because they they concern with this human population increase in the human population at the same time they need to maintain that the same level of an economic development or the same level of an economic growth uh, which means here comes the primary understanding is that one side there is a human population increase on the other side suppose the question is that if we try to reduce reduce the production process, reduce the industrial production, and ultimately it would lead to the reduction of the wage. And if the wage level reduces, the standard of living would also decline. So this has the repercussion to the production process, the production as well as the consumption process. And at the same time, this entire understanding rests on capital wage linkages. Suppose if we reduce, if we attempt to reduce the national production, why is the growth? The capital, we will not able to reproduce the capital. At the same time, if the capital reproduction doesn't happen, again in due course, the wage would also automatically, which would decline. And this becomes a kind of a detrimental to the economic development. 
So they, they try to answer this. They try to, as an economist, they try to answer this. How to provide a kind of a solutions? How to offer a kind of a different set of strategies? Formally, different set of strategies. Different set of strategies to address this. Now, it, it divides into, they, they bring two different notions they bring or they bring two different theories. The first theory is Schumpeterian model of development. The second one is more a kind of a Schumacher's idea of Ecology and environment in production process, in production as well as consumption. The first is that that the schumpeterian model of uh, development is that it fosters a kind of uh, the science and technology development. Science and technology development as a kind of a center center of development development paths that means when you, when you bring the science and technology as the center of an economic development that means the knowledge becomes a resources the knowledge becomes a commodity here Uh, this knowledge becomes a resources as a commodity in terms of a raw material. How? It is in the form of inventions to the innovations. So when you innovate, when you take the product to the market, what you do? We are trying to facilitate one is an entrepreneurial activities more number of entrepreneurial activities new industries are coming new factories are coming new products are coming okay so one is the entrepreneurial activity at the same time there is a kind of an increase in the employment opportunity so this is this is one set so what how this can entrepreneurial employment opportunities can be generated it can be generated through the inventions so the science and technology becomes part of the development process at the same time, the second point is that they also try to know the very idea that uh, the, all the sources which we have, these all are very fundamentally, very finite in nature. This is how they, they, they enter with the idea of a skumogus. Very uh, fundamental idea of it's made, so it's a, only a kind of a finite resources we have. We should move from finite to an infinite sources of energy. This infinite sources of energy which could come from the knowledge source, which could come from the inventions. So this second, this is primarily the idea A. This primarily becomes the B part. That means you, you, you generate more and more if you want to have more energies, more the economic development, then the more economic development should should, should should also depend on the infinite sources of energy. The third point is that they, they bring the consciousness of that ecological destabilizations or e ecological disorders. So they try to bring that whatever the technologies, whatever the technologies which we are going to produce, it should be based on the idea of clean and the green. That means it should reduce the level of pollution first. It should reduce the level of pollution. It should not harm the environment. That means we are more concerned about the negative consequences, the negative consequences of the economy on environments. So it should reduce the negative impact on the environment. Okay. This, the, then followed by that, we are also trying to produce, for instance, a new set of norms. 
new set of regulations for any any industry if you want to start any industries it can be a kind of an, for instance any factories you want to start a, a kind of an, you know, any of the new products you want to launch so it has a kind of an environmental regulations so each product each uh, factories are they are supposed to follow the environmental norms very rigorously so the environmental norms have become part of the production process part of the production process okay this is this is the c again so this when when the environment becomes part of the production process so we we brought the idea of ecology and environment into the production and consumption so through this idea they also move to the fourth level law fund regulation for instance the extension of the regulation is that uh, pollutions what are the pollutions what are the factors which we have the pollutions are happening at the free of cost so this this is one example of for instance i, I put it as being a fourth point but it could be a part of the regulations the pollutions are happening at the free of cost so whomsoever is trying to pollute the environment they should be like they should take they should be like uh, given a kind of an uh, penalized for the pollutions okay they should pay a kind of fees nominal fees okay um, this is this is this is very uh, become a kind of a crucial part of the economic reordering and restructuring okay these are some of the points through which they the economists they engage with at present okay um the next idea the next uh, looking at the sociologist energy point the sociologists they try to enter uh, with the idea of an energy transitions uh, with reference to for instance uh, examples the various ways through which we can engage with this is that one is energy inequality you just try to look at energy inequality as part of the inequality of class caste gender and geographical locations so i'll be able to explain this in a, in a later class how how the energy inequality is highly connected to the class caste gender and the geographical this is what one way of understanding that means when you are when you are addressing the energy equality you are indirectly addressing the class caste gender and the geographical positions okay this is this is one the second questions for them is that uh, primarily they, they they are more concerned for instance with reference to the indian social they more concerned with uh, the agrarian crisis agrarian crisis as well as the farmers mo movements and the farmers who say uh, what is the reason what is the reason behind the former agrarian crisis is that they try to look at that uh, that dis that that disasters which happen within the agrarian economy okay uh, and the primarily they understand that it's not just a mere and monsoon it's not just a mere kind of an uh, monsoon or a kind of a climate change which affects the agricultural production but new set of technologies new set of agricultural practices new set of agricultural practices in the form of seeds technologies machinery heavy machineries or involvement of more energy in the form of an electricity diesel is 
all increases the cost of production. Ultimately, they are not able to like get a kind of an income uh, for the cost which they have spent to produce a particular product. So ultimately, there is a huge loss which is happening. So primarily, the social artists engage with the question of an energy, science, and development by trying to look at the agrarian crisis. One is with energy inequality. The second one is with the agrarian crisis. The third is with the, what is the flaw? What is the flaw with the policy making? What kind of development strategies which have been followed earlier, earlier in the sense before 1990s and then how it changed in the post 1991 onwards and from there 2008 onwards. Is there any change in the development strategies? If there is a change in the development strategies, who is benefited? Who is benefited out of the development process? Who is actually uh, benefited out of the development process? And the question will be like on whose production, whose consumption, whose consumption has increased at the cost of what? And the fourth idea is that the understanding the energy transition is that understanding the behavioral changes behavioral and attitudinal changes so how we are we are trying to reorganize our social and economic life in the context of crisis or in the context of uncertainty and risk. So what are the new cultural orders? New social cultural practices which are emerging. These are some of the questions where the sociologists attempt to take an answer in understanding the factors which influence the transition of the transition of uh, uh, the energy. Okay, uh, for instance, uh, if you look at it, for instance, uh, the behavioral and the attitudinal changes. A good example of this one is that earlier we used to uh, carry and um, cloth bags to the market. Okay, now in the, the process of after the post, like for instance, when the when the all the shops try to give or attempt to give a kind of plastic covers, and then we stop the practice of carrying the cloth bag. Okay, at the same time now we are actually like uh, forced to buy a cloth bag from the shoppers. Okay, so this is this is what the uh, the behavioral attitude. Once once upon a time I was we were carrying the cloth bags. Now we left the practice of carrying the cloth bag. And we started practicing with the plastic bags, and I forgot to carry. And once again, the same the practice of the cloth bags coming into the market. You see that the cycles, you see the cycles, how the cycles are introduced. So the behavioral changes and attitudinal changes are we need to like understand this behavioral and attitudinal changes to understand or to understand how the development how we can sustain the development or how we sustain the economic growth. By, by sustaining the economic growth, we are also trying to mitigate two things. Important in us, very, very simple sense I want to put. If we are able to change the behaviors and attitudes, on the one hand, the growth is possible. At the same time, 
ecology becomes stabilized. Ecology becomes stabilized. This is a very very uh, crucial understanding. But however, we will be like taking this entire critic, entire critic of this transitions, critic of this uh, the transitions. Okay, so at the end of this class. We try to look at three different points. One is its most, its a scientific community, and then the, their interactions with. So it's it's this particular part, science, energy, and development. Okay. So how sociologists so attempt to understand the science, energy, and development in this present context? How they are how the economists are trying to understand it, and how, for instance, the scientific communities are trying to interpret or understand the relations. If we are able to bring the knowledge from different disciplines, knowledge from the dis different disciplines, we will be able to better answer or better find answers for the idea of utility maximization market as a kind of a self regulator, how it fails. Number fourth idea is that the politics, politics in decision making and resources allocations, and the fourth uh, point would be on uh, the individuals or the public point of views. Okay. So in order to answer some of these points, okay, so we need to explore the different understandings, the different understandings. One is from the scientific community's point of view, the other one is from the economist or economic point of view on science, energy and development, at the same time what the sociologists are trying to say on the relations between the energy and science development. So when we are able to bring all this knowledge together, so we can answer the questions or we can understand the idea of utility maximizations or the market as a self-regulator or, or, or for instance market versus the state and the politics in the decision making with the heterogeneity of for instance this politics which could happen with the heterogeneity of actors uh, interest and then finally, what is the positions? What is the positionalities of the public? Okay, uh, what is what is what is what what is the problem which we are uh, now witnessing with the common people? At the same time, trying to understand the nature. So it could be answering these could be possible, but trying to explore some of the answers for these points could be possible if we are able to engage with three these three different set of exports knowledge okay and with this part I, I, I stop it in the next class I would like to more uh, focus on uh, for instance contextualizing the energy this contextualizations with 1973 and then the 2008. These two contexts we will be able to look at very clearly in the process. We will be able to understand much, much better on these lines. Okay, and uh, thank you.